Today on The Topping Show, Shani Willis admits financial crime under oath, Tucker Carlson on Lindsey Graham pushing Ukraine bill, women shoplifting in California goes viral, toast to lay off 10% of workers, Ford CEO Jim Farley claims their pro line is the future and to forget about things like Tesla, and Lyft has a $2 billion typo error. All of that and much more on The Topping Show. Thank you everyone for taking the time to tune in today. Today's episode of Topping Show is proudly sponsored by Topping Technologies. Topping Technologies is an IT value-added reseller and services company with a special purchase IT security. Heck, I see their founder released twice a day. I see he's quite handsome and brilliant. He's me, you see, that's the joke. If you're an IT leader or a business owner, reach the team at sales at toppingtechnologies.com. Also trying to get to 4,000 subscribers by the end of February. So if you click that button and tell your friends, I would greatly appreciate it. Now, going over to the business problem podcast, you have Toast to lay off 10% of their employees. The revenue is up, but they're still in a little bit of a sticky situation. Now, Toast is perhaps one of the best examples of marketing. In terms of a company name, they are one of the, well, becoming one of the most well-known payment processing company in the food industry. So if you go, especially go to a local mom and pop shop or a smaller restaurant where it's not like a national chain like McDonald's or Burger King or Starbucks, if you go in there, you'll actually see a little device that they usually will hold. Next time you are looking at it, when you put your credit card, look and see if the logo is. More often than not, it is of, and they're good, and their logo is perfect, their logo is in fact of a bread of toast. And it does the exact same, well, some might argue it does it better than companies like Visa, MasterCard, and all those processing machines and companies, but they're a payment processing company. Now, in terms of the correlation between them laying off 10% of employees, correlating to the number of end users, or in this case, the number of employees being laid off, Unfortunately, it looks like specifically about 550 employees will be let go because the company is struggling. Now, thankfully, in terms of the industry, I think the industry is, well, obviously, there seems to be endless opportunities with uh, payment um, finance companies. So hopefully they're able to find a new place of employment shortly with their skill sets. So hopefully they won't be employed too long from this instance. Now, this is reported by Jordan Savet over at CNBC. And they're noting that the growth rate is going down a little bit. And... Interestingly enough, they said that it would lay off 550 employees, resulting in 45 to 55 million charges, mostly in the first quarter. Now, the maker of restaurant software reported better than they expected results, but continued to slow growth after the acceleration in 2021, when there's a huge boom in the restaurant industry because of the government forced shutdowns and mandates. They had, again, mentally vacuous in many ways. They would also say, you, if you own a restaurant, you can operate if you just put people outside. So again, traditionally, a lot of the restaurants would have the, the little terminal where you put your credit card in at the front or the back of the store. And then with outside, you want to be more mobile, be more quick and efficient. These machines helped out since again, they also have a hardware device accompanying the software and the, the waitress could just take it up and she could just give you this little machine that's maybe the thickness and size of maybe four iPhones, so to say. And yes, Americans will use anything except the metric system for the record. Now, it looks like breaking down some of the other statistics, they note that the earnings per share for the company have a loss of seven cents per share versus the loss of 11 cents per share as expected. Now, some of those things were just like when Amazon getting started, they lost a lot of money, but they had a lot of revenue for many years. Now their revenue is a lot more than I thought actually. The revenue came in at $1.04 billion versus the expected $1.02 billion. They know that the total revenues increased almost 35% year over year during the fiscal quarter. According to the statement, the net loss, however, of 36 million narrowed from the 99 million in year ago quarter. So rudimentarily speaking, or simply put, last fiscal quarter of Q4, they lost 99 million. This time fiscal Q4, you know, last quarter, they only lost 36 million. So again, they're moving in the right direction, but again, they're still losing money. Now, it looks like, let's actually do a quick summary of their stock and see what the fluctuation has been like. Again, none of this is financial advice or anything like that. Truth be told, in terms of gambling and investments, I can't help but think the best investment is kind of cliche to say, but invest in yourself. Start a tra learn a new craft or trade or start a business. Sure, it's risky, but I would say it's, well, obviously I'm biased, I own a couple of companies, but it is highly rewarding and fascinating injury to say the least. Now, Toast, their stock is actually $22.14 per share. Granted, by the time this video is rendered and actually uploaded to the internets, it'll be fluctuated because again, it's a stock market. Now, in terms of the zooming out the five year, yeah, the five year trend. Again, it's another, another thing with IPOs, it, not all the time, but 
I mean, a lot of tech companies specifically, they seem to do an IPO, go up, then crash, and then years later, they'll grow up and continue over time. Now, in this case, they are, they're trying to still recover. So the past five-year trend, their stock is down 60.24%, which is pretty bad to say the least. A lot of value just erased seemingly, well, not overnight, five years, though. If you, a wise man once said, if you don't take the time to sit and notice the roses or smell the roses, time will fly or something like that. And again, going to the one-year trend, actually up 10.383%. Now, past six months, they're down, not a lot, but down by 4.8%. In past month, geez, at least, I mean, hindsight really is 2020 with investing. Of course, granted, I wish I bought the stock like everyone did, you know. But in the past month, it's up 28.18%. So that's really good. So in the past, last week, is up 14.3%. So it's again, it's going in the right direction. And it looks like kind of give you a number, give you a high level scope of the organization in terms of size. They have 4,500 employees. As of 2022, revenue of 2022 was 2.473 billion. So it'd be interesting to see the, they also know that it's, these cuts come weeks after and uh, Aman Narang, the Toast co-founder and CEO, was replaced. Uh, Chris Capartio as CEO under the corporation's leadership just last summer. The, the Toast started charging a fee of $0.99 cents for each online order that totaled more than $10. That seems ridiculously high. Now, granted, apples to oranges in terms of they're saying online orders, and granted this is food, but a good industry average, average if you go to like a mom-and-pop shop or shoot, most grocery stores, most of those transactional fees are usually between 3 and 4% when you look at companies like Visa. Now, granted, that adds up heavily in the aggregate. Those are multi-billion dollar companies. And again, it's all about gaining customer, gaining market share. And convince, in this case, they're trying to sell this software and this hardware, this technology to business owners as well as large companies so that when they're processing customers' payments, they're using their infrastructure, their technology. And each of these companies, once they win a contract, when they're processing them, they may take a percentage of how to make a profit. So that... 99 cents per each i mean that's and again no no customer wants to pay for this in terms of the end user so a lot of these companies just bury that cost so you don't see it so an overwhelming majority of the time i think new york just passed a law though so in their area they do have to have a line item on your receipt but usually this cost is just hidden into the price of the food or the price of whatever you're buying so the customer doesn't realize how much these can will help or kneecap companies in terms of their profit margins so unfortunately well, it also looks like they are having a lot more competition. They noted Block, which I forgot what Jack, the old Twitter guy, he re, I think he bought that. He bought, was it Square? He bought a payment processing company then renamed it to Block, which, eh, I don't know if that's great marketing. They also have Shift4. It's another competitor there that's starting to get some market share. So it'll be interesting to see, again, can they make it? Because... Again, unprecedented economical, political uncertainty in the United States. Are consumers going to decrease their spending? Are they going to increase it? Because again, just a little bit of increase or a little bit of decrease can be detrimental for these types of companies where they're making a fraction of each transaction. So it'll be interesting to see, but as I always say, time shall tell. Thank you everyone for taking the time to tune in. Again, we're trying to get to 4,000 subscribers by the end of February. So if you click that button, greatly appreciate it. Also sharing the video, leaving a comment or up, up thumb or thumb down is a great way to give me some additional feedback, letting me know how I can make the show better and better. Lastly, don't forget to take the time to tell your family, tell your friends, tell your coworkers, heck, tell your enemies, tell anyone and everyone. Just stay safe and fight the good fight.